God, that's the most 90s like thing we've done in a long time. Mm -hmm. Or like the late 90s. We do 90s shit. I, we're pretty much constantly living we're in the 90s. past. We're a 90s band. <laughs> <laughs> we constantly live in the past. Hello. Uh, I'm playing uh, acoustic guitar, and this is playing the djembe. Uh, how are you doing? Nice. Thanks for joining us yeah. on the, uh, the Granola Podcast. Uh, we I feel like such an idiot. We're out, out of incense. Today. <laughs> oh, man, what, what a, a loser. Oh my gosh! What a I corporate know. shill! I, I ran out of uh, I ran out of incense. I, I've got my burner here, but it's Fuck like God. How heavy is that fucking piece of gear? It's though? way too heavy. It's I a couldn't big djembe, it. but I I could play more djembe. I need a fucking I need a studio. I need a studio for all my drums. I have too many drums. I'm not one of those like small drum set drummers. Even yeah. if I was, I like you still I, need a room this size at least. You know. Yeah, and I feel like you know. Some people shed um, drum pieces as they get older, but like I feel like you're doing the opposite. You've like acquired like a lot of new drums in the last year or so. Mm -hmm. right? Some new, mostly new cymbals, but yes, also some new drums, and I'm yeah. building them as well. That's yes. really cool. Welcome to the uh, Rhythm Section Podcast. I'm uh, Smith and this is uh, Smorch Torfelson. <laughs> Welcome to Welcome the to Rhythm the Real or Slum Slum to the cast cast. <laughs> That's what Slum the Slumming It cast. Uh, by people who have Oh, that's what we used to say for Motivational May Monday. Monday. People who have no business. Why do you always got to talk about your other podcasts in front of me? Because I'm uninteresting and I say the same things over and over again. How do you think that makes... I'm just curious. How do you think that makes me feel when you always go on my other podcast? Man, John Westall. Oh, I guess it's probably... I guess it's probably how I feel when I hear you talk about all the other bass players in your life and how you're just fucking... Which I don't. I hang your, oh, yeah. You frequently brought up the other groups that you're playing in. Uh, on the pod? No. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. I keep those conversations I, private the... because I, I respect you. Well, you don't. It hurts, and it's frankly a little careless. Uh, and so I'm going to be careless about my other podcast. Oh, so you don't think we should both walk away from this... Being better people, you think no, you're not gonna double down. I want to <laughs> I be petty. It. <laughs> I want to be petty for once in my life. Actually, fair enough. Not even close. I'll give the, you that. For the you know, fair time. enough, John. <laughs> you're generally not a petty guy. I'll give you this one. If it's me, I will. I that's my cross to bear. I'll give you that. I'll do that for you. I will accept your petty bullshit. It's, it's actually fine. I don't. I don't really mind that you're playing uh, with other bass players because I play with other drummers too. And you know, you're free to play and uh, or make another podcast with like a guitar player. <laughs> <laughs> it's <Have> fun. <laughs> yeah, you get to player. play the guitar player all the time. Woo, just kidding. I, <sighs> I mean, the only problem is where would I start? Who would I? What guitar player would I? I can. You'd have to narrow down uh, all the guitar players you know, which would take the rest of your life because there's n there's more guitar players on the planet than there are human beings. There are a ton of guitar players, and guitar players. A lot of guitar players seem to like me for some. I always had a good bond with a lot of guitar players. Who, which guitar player out there in the universe would I probably do a podcast? Do a podcast with? Mm. I'm trying to think. Uh, one person comes to mind, my friend uh, Jeremy Rouse, who may or not still be may or may not still be uh, Surly Guitar Tech. <laughs> a Surly Guitar. That's tech? his Instagram handle, nice. I think, on, on Instagram. Nice. Uh, I like it. Just because I, I just know he, we, we would be able to go off a little bit. And uh, I, uh, there's a couple other people. But for now, I think Jeremy would probably um, shout out Rouse Tech at Weebly.com. And uh, yeah, I think J Jeremy's a guy I could have a fun podcast with. But you never know. I think that like guitar techs and like live sound engineers front of house guys and like tour managers and stuff that's like an ilk of people that i i really like because they're not as like fragile and fucking like self-absorbed the way musicians are you know what i mean they're, they're fragile like, self-absorbed in a different yeah, way. yeah but they're like they, they they they're comfortable with being like yeah i'm like in this world but i don't need to be on stage are fucking they? like, no? like soaking up all your fucking applause all the time like you know like music we had this conversation the other day too because like i don't care who you are if you're a musician or a performer 
no matter how like much you say you don't care, like you're in it because you want people to clap for you. Like basically at the end of the day, like that's, if, if you wanted to make money, you would pick a different <laughs> career or like you may, you might love it and be passionate about it, but really you, you want people to like you and you want people to clap. No, there, there's, I don't think anyone would argue with that. Like, does not matter? I know that sounds really shallow, but it's true. We're just, you know, we're just people out there who want to be liked. And I think that's true of pretty much all musicians. But it's interesting because like guitar techs and sound guys, front of house guys, you know, people, these other people in the music industry, like, you know, they have their skill set and their expertise, but they don't need to fucking do a raging solo for you to know about it. They don't care if you know it, but they're actually the coolest people in like, I think in bands and crews. They're usually the most laid back and uh often they're pretty surly too like you said like because like they're like a little maybe jaded like other yeah people are, but. i mean that would be yeah that just describes this guy in a lot of ways to a t um you know what i mean they're comfortable it's like yeah cool I, I i happen to be a better guitar player than everyone in this band but like i don't really care if you know that and i'm like yeah that's cool. yeah yeah you know jeremy I mean? spe uh, specifically terrific guitar player he might be in that camp yeah you are going to get a lot of good players um <clears throat> and most and, and, and frankly and actually I should i should say this too is that most guys like that are are also musicians on like in other aspects they have their own bands they do their own thing like i am know, suspicious they're just of they're people. usually people with like just lots of different talents and skills i find i am suspicious of people who love gear oh yeah a little too much gearheads are highly sus yeah yeah it's especially true. when they also like when they're not like self-aware when they think that they're musicians and they're just like you know. I, yeah, I find sometimes uh, people who are not not always, but like people who are really into gear, often are kind of like, it's like the driving a big ass brand new truck thing. It's like they're kind of trying to compensate. I feel like sometimes by like maybe not being super comfortable in their playing, so they're always like talk switch like leaning on gear to explain some sound yeah some problem. technique or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah you know yeah, what yeah. i mean They're like, oh i tried with this you know i got this new they can never in front get of the right sound night, you yeah, know yeah. i just wasn't i don't I know can't what i was really thinking really, like yeah. i love those old things and like they can just, they just want to talk about gear all the time but i'm more like want to talk about you know the simpsons <laughs> like i don't really want to talk about gear i want to talk yeah. about boobs that's and the a simpsons. that is a thing yeah. i think that like maybe they're in the wrong uh they're on the wrong field you know what I mean? Like, cause there, you need people like that out there. But I knew a few people. I went to school with some people like that who were just, I, I'm not hearing it. I'm just like, they were just talking about the, the pedals all the time and bringing them to all the rehearsals. And, and I love gear. I'm a gear nerd as well. I mean, I just spent an ungodly amount of money on drums in the last yeah. couple months, but I'm also a badass and that's a, <laughs> yeah. a different story. Yeah. You're I can also cool. play in fucking soup cans and have a really good time. Yeah. That's, a that's good chance. Some people like, around me will as well. But um, that's just, you know, it's a different thing. Like, music is something, like, different for me. But, I mean, anyways, I guess I guess what I'm saying is is that, yeah, people who are obsessed with it, you need those people. And that's cool because they create stuff. They invent stuff. They are the guitar techs. They know how to get better sound. They know how to yeah. maybe make innovations to the instrument, to the crowd, how to make it easier for... Maybe they've discovered a way, like, to make it easier to play with, like, some way for, like, setting the action that's, like, innovative or whatever. You need scientists. You need brains behind it. You can't just have a bunch of fucking teen hunks out here yeah, no. running the show all the time. No, the world the will be hunks chaos. will burn the world down. We need down. a few yeah. nerds to just <laughs> spice up the dish a little bit, you know? Yeah, that's true. Um, speaking of spicing, uh, spicing, spicing up the dish... Um, and dishes and food. Uh, man, I'm really reaching in a segue. Uh, <laughs> this is, if you didn't know by our fall foliage here on the front of our uh, official podcast table, i.e. my base case, uh, it is fully blown autumn season. Oh, everyone's favorite. Not too hot, and not we, too cold. Not too hot. It's just right and it's beautiful. You guys know you it's love that, time don't you? You, you know, never shut the fuck up about how people great love to, people love 18 the, degrees is. People love to tell this lie. They're like, I actually like this time of the year better than summer. Summer's too hot. It's like, shut it's, your. I believe, I believe like about 10% of the people that say that. The rest of them are just lying to themselves because they really are afraid of the winter that is coming. They're trying to tell themselves. Oh, they're trying to gas themselves up before shitty yeah. winter. Yeah, it's true. Because yeah, they have this 
But I mean, I actually do really love the fall. It is quite nice. It but. is fucking great. But there's a lot of let's talk about a lot of things that fucking stink about the fall. First of all, okay. Number one, the smell. It stinks. It's a stinky month. It's got a shittier, stinkier. You get those like cold dampness. You got early decay happening. I will say there's some bad smells. It's not spring, but but like you know, summer also smells. But okay, I'll, I'll give you that. I mean, I would argue sometimes the smell is kind. Of, the, the decay is kind of sweet. <laughs> So like, it's it, it, as long as you metal. don't know that it's like yeah, I guess it is. I love the sweet I decay, love the decay of death. And sweet decay of uh, death. <laughs> yes. But uh, the aroma of despair and uh, yes. you know composting uh, life from the trees is quite nice to some. Here's of some people. other things that. What else stink. sucks about the? Uh, uh, th- uh, I got one. Not everyone's gonna stand by this, but there, there's a lot of evidence to suggest that. Thanksgiving, the Thanksgiving meal celebration sucks. Whether it's because of family or food or travel or whatever your reasons, there's a lot of people that would agree. And I'm, it's not even my point. A lot of there's a group of people, whether I fit in it, that's neither here nor there. A lot of people would 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 sign off on the sentiment that the Thanksgiving meal procedure sucks. It's a lot. It stinks. It's a lot for the people that ha- that make it for all the work that goes into it. It's a lot for the people who host it. It's a lot for the people who sometimes have to travel long distances. And, you know, it's a, seeing like large groups of family members or whatever in like all in one place all at once can be very overwhelming for a lot of people. And yeah. that like, you know, the same way that like the hot, like some people really hate like, you know, Christmas or the holidays mm-hmm. just because of all the stress and the, everything. It's like, yeah, Thanksgiving yeah. dinner is like that kind Christmas of too. On a sl- yeah, it yeah. is like Christmas Junior. It's very true. It's like it can be a lot, and that's okay. It's all right if that shit overwhelms you. We're not all yeah. fucking here. Like, you know, I heard um, an indigenous author talking on the radio the other day, and she was saying how like, uh, you know, she said only half kidding had started calling Thanksgiving weekend your welcome weekend. <laughs> Like on that is like, oh yeah, you're mm. welcome. We gave you our fucking land and our whole world, you fucking bastards, while you celebrate like discovering it or whatever the fuck Thanksgiving's really about. But Not, I was like Thanksgiving's a little vague. It's yeah, yeah especially Canadian Thanksgiving. It's Canadian true. Thanksgiving a little vague, I feel. But true. I, I true I, but I thought hey, I just liked that. I was like, Oh, you're welcome weekend. That's that's pretty funny. That sounds like someone who doesn't love the fucking meal or the holiday or all that. Mm-hmm. Another thing that sucks about uh autumn? Pretty good chance that person's not eating turkey no. with cranberry. Probably not. Probably not. Another thing that I don't Possibly love not. about the autumn is that the fucking days get way shorter. Suddenly I, I hate it. Suddenly I have to stop doing shit at like seven o'clock and then in two weeks it'll be six o'clock and then We'll just fall into the eternal darkness of yeah. winter, and you know, and, and won't we'll come back to life next. At March. least when at least winter it gets dark early every day, and you get kind of used to it. Whereas in the fall, it gets dark at like a like seven ish, and you're like, oh, the day's over. But no, you get like four, three, four, five, six hours left, like you know, of your day. But you, there's this mental like, well. Time to do nothing now. And then yeah. you're like, wait, I just wasted the whole night when I could have been slightly productive. But you get this feeling like it's almost bedtime. Yeah, you know? it's true. And it's like, it was... oh, no, bedtime's not f- till five hours from now. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah exactly. Because n- less than two months ago, it was. And that gets doubled down when they hold, like, don't get me started on daylight saving times, folks. God damn bullshit. Why yeah, are we doing that? Another stinky part of autumn. Uh, dumb, here's what else sucks about autumn. Dumb. It snows sometimes in autumn. That's a winter thing. Stay in your lane. Yeah. Why are you coming into fall and autumn, you know, when this is like, that's not what it's about. That's fair. Uh, I f- really don't want to see, I want to see snow in winter and lots of it in winter. I don't really care for it in the shoulder seasons. So. For the for yeah. the children out there going back to school and the parents. Yeah, like, back to school sucks. Not everyone loves it. I mean, some parents might think it's kind of sick, but it also is like, it, it means... More work for you. Practices, rehearsals, fucking fees. Driving to the hockey reading rink four thousand times. Parent a day. teacher, yeah, the hockey rink. Yeah, um, the principal's report cards, office. Shit, report going, cards, yeah, going new clothes. Shit. It's stressful. I'm sure there's a lot of parents that are like, "Fuck, now I gotta like, you know, you know, can't send my kids to school with fucking cold mashed potatoes that I feed them all <laughs> fucking summer usually." <laughs> Although that honestly, shout out if you're a parent sending your kid, they should fucking honestly, man. If I ever have children, God bless. They're going to school with cold, unseasoned fucking potatoes for lunch, and they're gonna learn 
They're going to be embarrassed <laughs> and cry and come home hungry, and I won't give a fuck. It was like, why? I'm giving them perfectly nutritious it's vegetables for lunch. <laughs> just that, like, you can't really fault the bear for doing that either, because it's yeah, like... just a handful of vitamin C It's a vegetable. C it's good for you. It's like, what's the problem? They're like, that is fucking <laughs> potatoes. <laughs> yeah. It's just potato. It's going to have some crap dinner. You're like, no, that's not no, real but food. but kids got to be a little tired. I mean, fuck with these fucking, these God, little chill, like, forbid. when did, like... Anyways, I'm not going to sound off really on that. Also, uh, kind of fuck the month of November, just period. November is shitty. And I have uh, talked about this lately a few Mm. times because I know it's coming. But like the worst, the days are super short. It's like the nice part of the fall is over. Like the leaves are fucking gone. They're gone. It's like the trees are just Halloween. They're dead reminders of a fertile land that once was. (laughs) And... Uh, and like the days are short and it's cold. There's no holidays except for, oh, I'm sorry, the most somber fucking holiday to ever live, Remembrance Day. God, which, there's no food associated with November, not no, even. You know, what, no. you know what we said, you know what Remembrance Day is all about? Standing in silence <laughs> to remember millions upon millions of dead soldiers and people who weren't soldiers. I'm not saying we don't need Remembrance Day. But it's a fucking somber event. It's not a party. It's not you a turn-up. You don't, you don't throw down for Remembrance Day. I I would love, for one, would love to throw, like, a crazy fucking, like, just stinky, hot, sexy Remembrance Day club party. At, Man. Like, a, you know, like, with, sh- like, a dude, like, DJs and, like, sluts. <laughs> we should celebrate, like, whatever day. When, when what did the war? I just, the posters. Like, you could do so much with the posters. Like, it's funny because I, I, oh. I feel like November 11th, is the Canadian uh, Remembrance Day. And the United States have two. They've got Memorial Day and Veterans Day. And one of them falls on Remembrance Day as well. I think it's Memorial Day. What about September 11th? Isn't uh, that in there as well now? Uh, that's still technically summer. But what I was going to say is... Oh, yes, okay. It's too bad uh, that, like... It, well, it's not too bad. It's important to remember, like, you know, uh, you know, the, the world wars and all the crazy shit that happened. But um, I bet you the the, like general feeling back in 1919 or 1920 whenever the first world war ended was way more hype when the world when the war ended people were fucking like stoked they're like yes no more fucking war this is dope wait was, so you're saying remembrance day was probably a turn up early like on. on november 11th like when yeah. fucking you know the germans surrendered the first time or whatever like in in the 20s uh or whenever whatever the date was the year was like it, 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 you know, they talk about it like again, like World War Two, like after the war, like you know, people came home and had sex for six months and created a whole new, ju- like you know, mm-hmm. generation and like, party in the streets. Like the world was like, like fuck yeah, the war is done. They were pumped. You know what I mean? I wish we could somehow tap into that. Like man, I, I guarantee we've never been to a party like, hey, the world war just ended. Like let's party. Like that kind of party is like unheard of like our our grand grandparents and great grandparents who were like you know if you got off a boat from like war in europe in like the 20s or in the 40s and came home and you were a single soldier you probably just had to be like you probably just had to show up and then like uh, some girl was like i'll marry you and because you're a hero and like and and also every bar would just be like Here's everything you've ever wanted, like to drink. You got yes. whatever you want. You know what yes. I mean? Like those dudes were fucking heroes for sure. Like coming back, especially some of them were like 16 years old, man. You know, or when they left, anyway, they were. Mm-hmm. They like, were like 18. Yeah, <laughs> you know, they're coming home. Like God damn, that was crazy. But anyway, man, that's so funny that they were also too like, like none of no no one we know will go goes to, to the war. Like any people I know that go to the military are like, you know, it's like a it's like a job opportunity or like whatever. Like back in the day, they're just like, what are you doing? It's like, I'm going to go to this war. Yeah, sure. It's like, Oh, I think it was a little more direct. Yeah, you go like, to the war? You'd be at home and you'd get a, and you'd get a, you'd get a letter and it's like, you got picked for war. <laughs> it's like, Oh Dudes shit. were stoked though. They were all about going to war. It's like, you didn't they get a choice though. Like that's, that's the whole point of the draft. It's like, uh, you didn't was get there a draft. Fuck yes, man. Yeah. In the, in the world war, world war one and two, they were like, they had a draft. Canada had a draft for sure. Uh, or the United States had a draft for sure. I'm I'm quite sure that Canada did as well, but mm, maybe, maybe I not. Didn't know that. Actually, that's a good question. You know, I might be talking about it. for sure the United States did because that's um, you know the whole idea of draft dodging was you know happening. I thought that was only a that Vietnam was, thing. No, they definitely did it. Uh, I'm sure they did it in World War One. Maybe and they did. It, I don't know. Um, at any rate, imagine that you just get a letter and it's like, sorry, 
you, you, you got picked for war. And it's like, oh, shit. I was really hoping I wouldn't get picked for war. It would have been a lot easier to dodge a draft back then. You just drive like an hour. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, <laughs> it's like I'm in a new town. I'm in a new town. Let's like start like calling no myself ever Tim yeah. instead of Tom, and no Dude, one will that's ever something find romantic me. about that. The idea about it, just being able to like drive a couple yeah, states over. Right away. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna peace out to Canada. Yeah, or pe- pe- a lot of uh, yeah, a lot of draft dodgers made their way up here. Yeah, but I mean, it's pretty. There was definitely a lot of people that definitely 100 percent wanted to go to the war. Which is, yeah, then they probably got to war and they were like, oh, fuck, this is not cool. You know there was a bunch of them, too, that definitely <laughs> were probably just like... What are you going to say? For just, just purely racist reasons. They're like, I get to go kill someone different? Sick. Yeah. Like, yeah. They're like, oh, no, there are other white guys. They're like, oh, shit. Yeah, well, probably. And yeah. Vietnam came to like... Are these ones different? They're like, yes, they are. Son, they're like, holly G. Yeah, that, <laughs> I think that's pr- like kind of part of the whole like mentality of soldiers. It's like there's us, and then there's them. There's like the idea of the other. It's like you're co- you're you're here to kill. The also, other. we were just like you're talking about like a, a seventeen. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong. The kids of today are dumb as shit. We were stupid as fuck, but the ignorance and stupidity. I'm not blaming anybody of that time. Like. That's probably, like, probably, they were probably fired up. They probably thought it was sick. They were like, fucking, I'm a cowboy. I'm, like, fucking from one of them their movies, you know? Yeah, then you find out, like, what you're actually doing is laying in a fucking soaking, like, wet and cold trench for three months at a time, getting fucking gangrene and just, like, eating rations and trying not to get your fucking head blown off just to, you know, gain ten feet in in a field. Yeah. Oh man, trench warfare, gross. Anyway, see, November sucks. I mentioned November, and here we are talking about war and living in the trenches. That sucks. November is bullshit. Uh, so it's okay if you don't love the fall. You know, if you are trying to tell yourself that, you know, you love uh, pumpkin flavored shit and you know, picking apples and wearing plaid, like pumpkin it's okay. spice. To be fair, it's okay if you don't love. The, yeah, that's true. Pum- it's not pumpkin flavored. I don't think. I think it's just like nutmeg and cinnamon. Pumpkin spice is, is literally it? pumpkin flavor. Is it? Right? I don't know. I have no I mean, idea. I don't is know. It? It's pumpkin Does spice. Does anyone is... know? Is anyone is anyone listening? No one is listening. No one's out there. It doesn't <laughs> matter. We're taking a break because you're not there. It's just us. Yeah, we're we're taking a break. We're I want to stop for break. two seconds. Then we're gonna come back and play a game. I got a I got a cool game. Something's busy is what it is. Uh, do we have to play the instruments again? It's Sunday afternoon, starring John, who's a dickhead, Chris, who's fucking cool as fuck and has this great dick, and Jack, who's a filthy fucking garbage eating dog. It's Saturday night. Cheers, bro. I heard all that nasty shit you just said. Nasty shit about Jack? Most of which is categorically untrue, except for the shit about hey, Jack. Uh, uh, oh my god! Uh, woo, the woo, Hornitos woo, get your woo, right hornitos. in the fucking chest. Um, it does make you feel my a little... My dog bit. got into the garbage. Yeah, he's a break. filthy fucking... He's a filthy mutt. Look at him over there. He's you content. Shithead. Looking no. at his lips, wagging you his tail. Dogs do Everyone it. likes Jack. I swear... 30, a solid 30% of the audience tunes in just because they might see Jack. Yeah. It's a huge, I, I, that's a fairly, that's a, I think that's like, one, that's in, one in three people. Drunk one of three the people. three people who watch, one definitely one of them watches for Jack. Yeah. yeah, that's okay. Hey. Which is I, fine. I'll take what eyes can get, really. Yeah. If we did this for large viewership, we would never have started. And certainly wouldn't have come this far. This is our 16th episode ever. This is. Season two. Sweet 16. Point six. Um, And today, for reasons uh, that only we will understand, we uploaded uh, episode four. (laughs) But it's actually episode two. 
Um, because we thought it got lost, and then we uploaded it. And so we still haven't uploaded it last week. So we're all fucked up. We're going to get caught up here soon. But you don't care. We don't care. No, no man. No one cares, we're literally. Plug, we're just going to keep... Nobody cares. Just it's keep fine. plugging through. Just keep... It's not about... Plugging the holes. <laughs> Let's just plug every hole we just can get. Just plug every hole until the pain stops seeping out, because I want to keep the pain in and use it as fuel. Yeah, to for success. Oh yeah, pain fuels success. Yeah. Uh, I believe Confucius or Sun Tzu or uh, some Eastern philosopher said that. Smash Mouth. Smash Mouth, the band. That maybe. was their. That was their basically. I think that was on their their first run of merch. How come the lead singer from Smash Mouth isn't on reality television? Like, he seems like he should have. I think that's like what he should. Yeah, be doing. he's got a very like he's got a very like storage wars kind of energy to him. Like yeah, totally. You know some, what I mean? Like he should be running a California, restaurant, yeah. and we should be watching him run the restaurant. Like I feel like he's kind of one of the he guys be, that he has somewhere. enough old friends from the like you know being a huge rock star in the '90s and early 2000s, like. That he they could always have like he'd have guys like Vince Vaughn drop by. Yeah, yeah, he had like I could see him like all yeah. those reality TV shows. I could see him running a tattoo shop, running a restaurant, some sort of bike chop shop, classic car soup yeah. up shop. He's done again. I stand by my statement of him having strong storage wars energy. Yeah, for I, sure. I don't know if it's because he's got the same shirts as one of the guys on there, but he's got a little bit of that like. I don't know, like weird, Loud, oddball. boisterous. Are yeah. they? Are they a British band? No, they're American. No way, they're California yeah, boys. That's right, I'm pretty for sure. Orange County or something. Definitely Orange County. Orange hair, anyway. Huh? No, hey. some stripes. So I got a little game here I wanted to play. Uh, at first, games. I was trying to think of a game called uh, like Psych Rocker or Psychopath, uh, and I was trying to see if I could come up with a game where like you d you had to choose whether the name I gave you was the name of a <laughs> mass murderer or serial killer or the name of a psych rock band. Interesting. But, There's a lot but, of British people in both categories. I, I decided to kind of swing it to actually be a psych rock or psychopathic records artist. And if you're not familiar with psychopathic records, you might be familiar with a, uh, a certain fandom Known as uh, the Juggalos or Juggalos. Oh, I was I was checking out a, 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 some Juggalo footage the other, and I, honestly, I I vibed it, man. I, I once I saw the 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 stacks of Fago and like the fucking them all like running into like whatever that event is where they do the Fago thing. Um, there's probably lots, but it's probably something that happens at the Gathering, which is their like big like multi-day like festival once a year. Also, let's talk about Fago for a sec. The country of origin, they're not aware of our sort of. Uh, Fago is a product from Michigan, uh, from Detroit. You're a fully English, fully, place. fully American huh. brand. Yeah, and that's why. Interesting. It's, and it's associated with Psychopathic Records because that's where uh, Detroit is, where Psychopathic Records is headquartered. Mm -hmm. um, uh, pioneered by the artists uh, in um, Insane Clown Posse. So it's if you don't know anything about Juggalos or Psychopathic Records, uh, it's like a kind of a. Uh, niche uh, corner of hip hop um, where the uh, artists have said uh, label are usually rap. They, they always paint their faces like picture like kiss members. Um, but like their aesthetic is usually like carnivals and like fucked up uh, shit. Carnivals, they call it yeah. horror core is the name of given to that kind of rap music. Uh, they rap about really weird, depraved uh, mm. shit. Uh, sometimes it's comedic. Most of the time it's not. Um, and it's a very niche thing, but um, I don't know. It's kind of misunderstood. People like to make fun of the Juggalos, which is what the name that the fans of this music call themselves. Um, but they're actually a really misunderstood uh, like sect of society. And I know a little bit uh, about it them looks because like a bro, dang, it looks like there was a lot of camaraderie. I feel like yeah, it's one of those it, it totally is. Uh, once upon a time, I was on a, a tour. Yeah, uh, alumni. Yeah, we Juggalo were, we, were alumni. On, we got offered a spot on one of their big artists, uh, like U.S. tour. So I kind of lived in their world for a while. Now I'm not a juggalo. They had a name for people like me though, because I respected their culture their subculture and everything Whoa. they had a name for people like me they're called uh N nbas ninjas by association they're like oh cool if you so you're not if you're not one of us but you respect us and you let us do our thing then you're an nba and, and you support like, okay and i'm sick. like cool so but it's really neat because it's basically when it comes down to it these are just uh 
regular people, and a lot of them are from the fringes of society. To be frank, a lot of juggalos and juggalettes are from like, you know, um, they're just weird people. They're outcasts. They're like, you know, they're not uh, the popular kids at school. You know, there's some uh, fired but, up weddings. But man, sure. there is, it, it is. It, but like, their community is so loving and open and supportive, and like, they uh, they have all these cool like code names and shit well, and like call juggalo. and response shit, and it's like they all have like nicknames. They all paint their faces. Sign and me it's up. like it's crazy. It's really cool. It's like a huge community and they're all like, it's not violent and crazy and like sick. Like people think it is. It's just like, uh, it's I like, a it's like a padding during the fag. Oh yeah. So it's like, it's, they call it the family. They call it a bit. It's like a, it, it really, it really is that. And I was like, actually pretty impressed with like when I saw the way they treat each other and they support their band, like the way they support the artists is crazy. Like if everyone, uh, supported the artists and the music they love the way mm-hmm. that like that mm-hmm. juggalos do, um, then the music industry would not be in this weird, like, you know, microcosm that we're in now where artists, like, are, you know, can't pay bills or fucking, you know what I mean? It's, it's crazy. Like, artists they, always couldn't they, pay bills for the record, but. Well, no, they can. <laughs> can you pay your bills all the time? No, I say our artists always couldn't. But that's, oh, yeah. That's not a new phenomenon. True. No, it's right? not. What but I mean, mean but uh, psychopathic records, artists are like, uh, they are supported by the most ravenous fan base ever. And I think that's awesome. It's awesome to it's support this shit that you like. Um, saying nothing of the quality of the music because I don't really like it all that much myself. But anyway, that's a little blurb. Great. On. So Bring psych- it on, man. So this is records. Psych Rock. Psych rockers or psychopathic records artists. So I'm going to give you the name, and you got to tell me if it's uh, an artist from psychopathic records or if it's the name of a psych rock band. There's no crossover. They don't have psych rock bands in there. No, what is psych rock? Psych rock is like psychedelic rock, so it's kind of like. Is there any psychedelic music that isn't rock? Um, probably. I'm not really qualified to answer that. Uh, I, I would say yes for sure. So John John loves so, subgenres. I despise them. Um, I find point of genre, hey, is, it, is there an electric guitar? You're a rock band. Sorry to tell you, buddy. Yeah, it's a rock you, band, but like, rock and roll. I'm sorry, like the Beatles and Cannibal Corpse are both rock bands, but you know Correct. what? They're not the fucking same at all. I'm sorry. Kind, kind That's why same. genres are important because you need to fucking, if, if you like wide ranging varieties, like, you know, it's important to know the difference of these things. Sure. I mean, I, I would say Cannibal Corpse is probably more in the metal category? yeah but metal is rock metal is a type before it like is. you know i, I, I only need about I, what, eight what, before, I need about eight genres. before black sabbath came along people were just like oh yeah it's rock music and i only like, need about eight and you can blend them up country rock rap jazz uh that's it that's it okay but no, you already country, said country country rock rap jazz metal pop classical Oh, blues. Is that rock? Mm, blues is, yeah, blues, sure. Blues is. Oh, whatever. reggae. And reggae. And house music. What, but what about all the. <laughs> drum and bass. Yeah, okay. So there's about see? 12. Yeah, but this, like, fucking, like, fucking dick core, fucking. Well, you just said drum and bass and house, and you did a distinct. You made a distinction between those well, two. They're very, they're but, quite like, a lot of people different would, tempos, for sure. That's my point. Exactly. You proved it. You, you need them. We need well, them. Well, you need a couple categories. This game is called Not, Psych Rock or Psychopathic Records. So you got to tell me which it is. To define Psych, uh, psych Rock, uh, go on the, the Googles or the, the Wikipedia. Yeah, Wikipedia. Fucking All right, here we go. Number one. Fact. King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. Psych Rock or Psychopathic Records? That is a Psych Rock band. Correct. Ding, ding, ding. That, that one, I know. They're a current uh, They are a current band. one. I've yeah, heard of them. That's right. Yeah. There's a couple a of young name. kids at a... Somewhere else. <laughs> Cheers to them. <laughs> they're not from here. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. So I don't like them. That's one. Okay, one for one. Uh, Dark Lotus. Psych Rock or Psychopathic Records? Mm. Dark Lotus. Dark Lotus could... It's That's a good teeter-totter. Mm, right? Mm. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll go with Psychopathic Records. Ah, uh, ding, 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 ding. Ding, 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 dong. All right. That is a... I, no, talking about the right. Witch is I believe Derek... Lo- well. I don't know for oh. sure, but I think that's like a super group in the Psychopathic Records okay. thing. I think it might be like a bunch of members from different Twisted things. Twisted Mike and... Yeah, probably. Jared... <laughs> Jared Death. Jared Death. <laughs> <laughs> Jared like Death's a yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Okay. Uh, how about uh, Slift? 
Slift? S L I F T. Slift. Definitely Slift. Psych Rock. Yes. I it know is. that they yes. came up on a YouTube algorithm recently. Did they come up on yours? No, I just I had to research these. Have you? This might be easy for you because maybe you're listening to more Psych Rock than I perceive because you already knew King Gizzard and Slift. So Slift, I, they got a. I just they had a cool thing of like some like naked like silver thing dragging a giant sword, which I thought was cool. Mm. It was a cool image. It was like this inner. It was just it was cool imagery. I would like to know more about their name too. Slift. We'll rock some Slift after this. What about uh, Zug Island? Zug Island. I'm going to throw that into the Psychopathic Records camp. Oh, you are again. right. Interestingly enough, Zug Island, uh, they were, I think, one of the only bands on Psychopathic Records. Uh, so is Insane Clown Posse a rap group? Yeah, Insane Clown Posse is... Insane Clown Posse. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Insane Clown Posse is the founding uh, group of Psychopathic Records, and um, they're uh, they, they consist of two guys, uh, Shaggy Two Dope, and the other guy's name is uh, Violent J. Uh, and again, it sounds like I'm 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 not a juggalo. I just happened I lived in their world for a while, so I know I just absorbed a lot of information. Zug Island actually one of the tour manager for the group that I was in. He had he was one of the guys, he was in Zug Island. Oh, I think he fuck had been yeah. the bass player of Zug Island. Zug Island. Is Zug that Island, like a place where there's like yeah. a prison? No, Zug Island is a little uh, island uh, in the Detroit River, and it's like where the famous like Windsor Hum uh, came from. If you've ever looked that up, Google that. Uh, the Windsor what? The Windsor Hum. There's like this like bizarre like frequency that was like emanating from Windsor Ontario that for like a long time people scientists like were baffled by it they didn't know what it was um, and some people thought that it was coming from uh, like beneath Zug Island uh, and it was like yes yeah, it's, it's I weird. wouldn't surprise what it did they ever find out what it is uh, this mystery uh, can only be answered by googling Zug Island damn Zug Island I'm yeah. Zug <coughs> it sounds like some CIA All shit right. uh, let's see here twisted Twisted, Twisted is probably psychopathic. Records. Yeah, it is. It's like the, it's like they're, they're, that's the group that we toured with. They're like the second. It's funny, place. didn't wasn't that the name I came up with? Twisted like, Mike, Twisted, Jared, Twisted, Twisted Mike, Mike and yeah. Jared. Jed. Jared yeah, <laughs> is that us? Uh, yeah, that's right. You're doing great. You're five for five so far. Um, I crushed okay. last game. Didn't I fucking smoke last game too? Perfect score. I think you may have done very well in the last one. I don't know. Maybe I'm not making. I think I, get, I think the last week I got John. John ripped the game. I got a perfect score and I got the bonus. I thought, but we'll. we'll yeah, I think we'll you have did. to check. You may have not. We don't have to retract more statements. We've been on a good, we've been on a roll lately of non-retracted. I just haven't really been watching back to like probably a good idea. We only have so much time. To correct us, anybody if they're watching. Uh, okay, Robert Bruce. Robert. Oh, that Bruce. is a, that's a psych rock. Fucking British guy for sure. <laughs> Wrong! That is a psychopathic records dude. Nah, Robert Bruce. I, I disagree. <laughs> well, I got it from their page. He's, he's a guy. I don't know That's why. your opinion. <laughs> You're entitled to I your actually, you, It worked. I put a check mark next to it. You fucking fooled me. It's an X. You got that wrong. Well, did I? You did. And yeah. I see a big, fat, nice, beautiful check right there. It's now uh, now it looks like a dead Kennedy symbol. I can't show it to you. Okay. Because this is where well, I can't read, so it doesn't oh. matter. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go with uh, King Buffalo. King Buffalo. Hmm. Psychopathic hmm. Records? Wrong. That's oh, a psych no. rock band. Now I'm going off. No, no, I lost it. I Finally, it broke your streak. Losing your, losing your fucking intuition. Nice. Now to crush you with the next one. <laughs> Misery. Misery. Psychopathic Records. Yes, it is. Okay, you got that one. And I was hoping you weren't going to ask how it's spelled because they would have given away it's M-Y-Z-E-R-Y. <laughs> 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 like, that would have been a dead giveaway. Dead like, solid. Oh, intentionally misspelling like names with Zs. Keeping that in mind, I'm going to start asking for spellings, though. That's important. Yeah. Well, here's one. Next, yes. <laughs> Actually, these next, these next couple will probably be pretty easy. <laughs> okay, uh, let's go with uh, Foxygen. Oh, Foxygen? Foxygen. Psych Rock? Psych Rock. Foxygen is a Psych Rock band. They're kind of almost Psych Pop, maybe. but Yeah. You know, they're like, uh, they're, yeah. Sorry, Chris, they're rock music, I guess. Yeah. 
Do you know that? I won. That's all. No, I've heard of them, but... You got one more. I cannot keep up with these bands, I dude. can't either. I had to look all these up. I don't really know many. Yeah, I you, love music so much, but, like, people are like, what do you like to listen to? I said, whatever's playing. <laughs> yeah, I like, the people, so I've had people be like, I can't really... Pa-. Dave said that the other day when I was working with Dave Hope. He's like, I can't really read, like, what you're into. I was like, whatever's on, man. I don't care. Like, yeah, I literally, like, I don't have time to care about music. It's just, it's all... All it's all okay. Yeah, and I think people are surprised to find nothing that nothing blows me away. Like, like nothing's ever like, oh my god, everything. I'm like, it's great. I was yeah, like, but you heard this rare Bob Dylan shit? It was great. Sure. But that's like that's, a that's like that's awesome. I that really I think that takes people by surprise because you're such an enigma. Because most people who are as good at an instrument as you are are like really into music and very opinionated about it. and you're just not that you're the opposite of that you're like like when we asked a couple of weeks ago what your just five top albums you named five little beat mixtapes <laughs> pink flame <laughs> blue flame yeah Great yeah flame. exactly you're just like i don't care it's like whatever like, it's all good like people are just I like i guess i like what most what? the majority of stuff i'm attracted to is purely like is, is a high content of improvised yeah. Shit, I love people improvising. I is is the superior thing for me. But anyways, yes. Here's one, Elder. Elder, Psych Rock. Yes, that's the it's only a, band I actually great, knew. Great they're, Psych Rock. They're fucking name. sick. They're Congratulations actually, they're, they're on your more, name, boys. They're more of a stoner uh, metal mm-hmm. band, a stoner rock. Band. I thought that might be a thing. Uh, Some crossover, I'm sure. Yeah, for sure. I I kind of knew them. I was looking up like bands like a Psych Rock current bands and i was like oh elder i know this band well early psych rock and prog rock has a very sort of there's a very like lord of the rings sort of element to it elder you know an elder spirits and all right um last one and if you don't get this you're fired axe murder boys (laughs) the axe murder boys psychopathic (laughs) records i'm guessing yes it's it's actually psychopathic records that's a great name i feel like though honestly like (laughs) After seeing that Juggalo's uh, footage of the one of the shows the other day, I'm like, man, maybe I can get into this shit. This is probably a bad stage of my life to get into the insane clown man, posse. They'll, but they'll take, they'll take like, they'll take everybody. Comers, they'll eh? take anyone, man. That, that, that's the whole thing. It's like they don't care who you are, where you come from, where you live. Uh, uh, <laughs> that's a problem. Yeah, like, no, they they really don't. It's like really, like, that's like a uh, cult. To say, like. Yeah. Like, I feel like it's actually surprising because there's not much of a juggalo, like, uh, community in Canada, as far as I can tell. Like, they don't play, like, there's not a ton. It's probably in Windsor. It probably doesn't uh, get further There past was that. some, there was actually a dude uh, from Windsor who, There's like, definitely got to be a Toronto contingency. There was a Toronto, like, uh, like a, contingency. Like, a, like, there's probably, like, an official, like, club. They had, like, the, the artists would go to Toronto, but they didn't play in Canada a lot. A lot of them, I don't think, could because of... But like, aren't they a Detroit outfit? Or just the record? The record label. The record label. Most, a lot of the bands come from Detroit. Yeah, it's true. A lot of the artists are in Detroit, as far as I know. Like, um, yeah, like, like, one of the guys that we toured, one of their artists, his name is Blaze You Dead Homie, and his whole persona is, he's like... Uh, he's a slain gangster from the streets in Detroit, but he's come back as a ghost, and like that's what he raps about. That's kind of cool, though. Man. <laughs> it is I cool. Like it's this? like that. He has like a very like high concept like persona, mm-hmm. and it's like mm-hmm. most people are like, "What? I don't care." And they listen to music. Like, if the care. bars are there, then I'm about it. Like, but also at the same time, it's that's how can you? Kind of where I draw like, cause, like honestly, as someone <laughs> who loves hip hop music, like. Most of this shit didn't fly with me. Uh, no bars. Like the bar, like they're they're okay, but like some some of the content's really fucked up and like just like you know shitty. shock. Yeah, and it's just like this isn't good. It's just you just the concepts are all great, but I mean they actually have a really sick. Uh, they have like a sick um, uh, indigenous like uh, artist on their uh, roster too though. His name was uh, ABK Anybody Killer. And we actually opened for him at a really famous Detroit hip hop uh, venue called um, the uh, the Hideout, uh, which is beneath uh, St. Andrews Hall. Um, and the Hideout is featured in like movies like Eight Mile, and oh, like, you can see like oh, oh no, sorry, not the Hideout. It's called the Shelter. 
shelter. Hideo is uh, Toronto. Yeah, that's right. Sorry, I said the Hideo. The shelter is uh, probably a fairly common bar name. Probably it's is, probably but it's like a really them. like famous like hip hop like venue uh, in Detroit, and uh, we played there exactly once, uh, opening for um, ABK, and I was like, it was the first time I was kind of like, whoa, what the fuck is this? It was weird. Like once like <laughs> once you're kind of in that world uh, as like you know they they didn't like hate us and they didn't love us but like they, they were they were like if you guys want to keep playing we'll give you shows and we'll give you opportunities and we were kind of like is this going to ostracize us from the rest of the music world uh and it's sort of i always say it did uh actually it didn't really people didn't give a fuck they were just like oh never heard of that band interesting but anyway long story short chris won uh psych rock or psychopathic records what, what was started. my score uh six you got ten? one two three four five six seven eight Nine out of um, 11. I think there's 11 here. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's seven, a good score. Eight, I'll nine, take that. 10, 11. Yeah, there's 11, and you only got two wrong. You killed it. That's a great record. Robert if, Bruce if, and King Buffalo threw you for a fucking loop. And I feel like you were, you teetered on Dark Lotus. You weren't like, you were like, it could have gone either way. But You did well. That's great. What do you mean? That's a personal opinion. You teeter. literally said, like, hmm, that's a good, like, teeter tot. I think you used the word teeter when <laughs> describing that. I've not <laughs> actually said I, that. That just, what I, what I say isn't always what I mean, Joe. I want to interject a fucking shot here where we go back and, like, <laughs> ah, play this. And so listen, like, that doesn't mean... Fuck all, dude. It does. That's that's. You ever play poker? It's called Poker Face. I don't dude. play poker, and your poker. You face... should, and we should get a Truro poker table going. I'm gonna fucking make this happen. If you play poker in the Truro area, holler at me because I'm a notorious, greasy gambler. <laughs> I love a notorious degenerate. Gambler. I'm. A, I love being small stack. I love being the underdog. I love being the big dog. I love bullying people at the table. I like to be bullied. It's a fun time. You're like a poker cuck. Like, you do you yeah. Leather? You want to be beat. I do everything. You just you pull out the table and I don't want to play goes. poker because I understand that it's like the only way for me to get better is to lose a bunch of money. And I'm fine with not losing money in mm, any new It's an ways. important game. It's, it's one of those, it's a distinguishing, it's actually in a, in a book that you gave me about how to be a real man. Uh, what? I gave you such a book? Yeah, you gave me a book one year about how to be a real man. I did? Wow. Pinocchio's Guide to Neat. Life. Neat. Didn't you give me that book? Was it a little black book? Yeah, it's all the th it's like all the, the tips and tricks about how to fucking... Oh, and it's like teaches you how to like change a tire and like tie a Windsor knot and yeah. all that shit. Yeah, right? I forgot about that. Yeah, that's true. That was a cool book. I need that back. Uh, John's like... I really need some advice. No wonder I haven't <laughs> you been a man. Have you read that yet? Like, Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah. All right, we're gonna take a um, quick break because John's gonna learn how to play poker, and we're gonna go. play strip poker. <laughs> the TV oh. That was terrible. We <laughs> should we should actually play a game of <laughs> strip poker. Some heads up strip poker. Yeah, we can do that. And just d destroy John. Rapper. Rappers always got money. Mm. Um, we both lost a strip poker. I let him. Uh, I let him lose. <laughs> you let me I mean, lose. I, I let me Thanks win. for letting me lose. <laughs> All your cards. Why is this is so used and abused? Look at this credit card. It's all this shit. Looks like one of those fucking hurricane straps we put on the gazebo the other day. Check out these. Oh my god. You I almost free have copies? free coffees. You are a degenerate gambler. Let you me... like? Can I put these in? Yeah. Can let me buy in? I've got two free. I got coffee. three out of four <laughs> coffees required for the free coffee refill. Let me just take a moment here. First of all, cheers to you, John. God bless you. I love you. Your soul. I love your body. I love your hot, sweet Thank body. You. I love your <laughs> sweet bod too, bro. Oops. Whoa, that tequila fucking hits you right in the fucking dick. Wow. Okay, but that being <laughs> can't said, be that funny when my mouth is full. No, it's there's <laughs> nothing funny about tequila, dude. Nothing funny about tequila. You understand? Um, 
Let me go off for a minute here, homeboy. So there's there's uh, I've been there's a couple coffee shops around town. Some I like more than others. It's neither here nor there. I'm not gonna rank them. I'm not gonna rate them. That's all off cam shit. Okay. In which case you gotta understand I am real off cam. I'm not just a cam boy. I'm not I'm not one of your fancy little e boys here. Okay. Boy. I'm a real life boy. I live in the real, real world. I experience real life. Experience real life. <laughs> I like Americano coffees. I like Americanos. I like them good. Americano. And I'm not that fussy. I'm not that snobby. Just like them good. Real good. There's a couple things I need. I need them fast. fast. I need them hot. hot. The way I want them. The way I want them. <laughs> if they're cheap, even better. If they're expensive, I don't mind. I'll pay upwards of $5 for an Americano. And I have. Countrywide. Coast to coast. Don't care where. No fucking jokes, okay? I don't want to say where... I don't want to say... Which tea house I had to wait 25 minutes... I may be over-exaggerating. It was closer to 15. For an are Americano. You, are you exaggerating or over-exaggerating? I'm just <laughs> exaggerating, I think. Because it was actually oh, probably over 15 minutes. For an Americano. But I gotta say this. They have these new fancy machines out here in the gas stations now. These Americano machines that are lightning fast. And once, once fucking yuppies and soccer moms find out about them and regular folks... <laughs> Game over, but lightning fast. Circle K, you go to the Circle K. Guess what they're offering you? McDonald's suck my cock because four coffees get the fifth one free. Okay, McDonald's. I thought McDonald's was on some shit because it, tenth one free sounds reasonable, right? Buy nine get ten tenth free. Yeah, that sounds like a promotion. McDonald's. What do they do? Six coffees, seven. Yo, you know what they McDonald's does? Uh, seven, and then you get. The eighth free, but you know what I realized a while back? I saw someone with a card from Alberta. Theirs go to five, and then you get a free coffee. No, yeah, That's... they had it di in different regions. The number is different. Mm, on, so in Ontario, fucking Scotia Alberta, hurting Albertans apparently like only need to buy five copies before they get a free one. Look, there's one up there on my thing, right? Like you can see it. Seven it requires seven purchases, seven stickers before you get a free one. Well, listen, even Alberta McDonald's gets their fucking ass smoked, buried, by the Circle K, uh, buy four, get one free. And yeah. God bless the shorty, she gave me two for one, I think. But also, I'm yeah. going to say this, you're in and out in fucking two. Didn't you and I go there for coffee? We went day? to the one where we played in Mahone Bay a couple a weeks. Couple it minutes. was good. Yeah, it was good. There was good. crema on top of the coffee. You can get steamed milk. Crema. You can get foamed milk. I could get a macchiato in about fucking 60 seconds. Ralph Macchiato. One button. One button. It's got a grid. What kind of coffee do you want? Dark roast, macchiato, cappuccino, blah, blah, blah. Fucking, you know, cortado. I don't know if they had cortados. They probably did. Going down the list. What size do you want? One button. Zoop. Zoop. Hit it. Get the coffee. Boom. Get it. And I'm sorry, but... I am I, I'm a fucking dirty capitalist pig, and I respect the economy of that. I would love to support a local business, but guess what, bitch? 15 fucking minutes of my time is worth more than 15 minutes of yours. So learn how to fucking tamp your shit right, learn how to get the crema popping, and stop fucking up orders when I'm waiting on my lunch hour and I'm paying a photographer up the street already on their clock. Because if not, Circle K gets the win. Circle gets the square. And by square, I mean rectangle. A check mark. And by rectangle, I mean one of these $20 bills, which I'll get $18 back because it's a $2 coffee. That's all you need to hear. Go to Circle K. $2. Get coffee. Go to Circle K. Get your coffee. Delicious. Damn. Are we sponsored by Circle K now? I don't care. I just want coffee. Can someone get me a fucking coffee, please? No. You drink your tequila if okay. you want coffee, all right? Damn. I'll drink... God I guess it. I'll drink Can adult Can I put my drinks. shirt on now? Is this necessary for us to be shirtless? We Can I did leave the... my shirt off now? You can, because that was heated. That was here, heated Jack, maybe you should get out of here, man. Because hot breasts. It's getting crazy. We're putting our clothes on. My breasts got hot. Oh. I got to talk about coffee. Get a little sweats on my like... my breasts. Yeah, it's not so bad. Dude, you, your tits look great. Mine are getting furry as I get older, man. I didn't uh, have furry tits. Yeah, either. I gotta shave mine. They don't shave. Do you shave yours? No, you don't. The, well, not the tits, but like... No, I mean, I'm talking about the actual breast part. Oh, no, those don't get too bad. Nice, uh, dog. But oh, the, hey. uh, 
The nice uh, kids, you know what though the 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 my the nips got to get like you know they got to get trim? manicured. I'm once in a scared while. to go near there because once I do fucking game over. But man, oh I man, that's getting... a bunch of baloney. He's like, oh, don't shave it once because it'll just grow back thicker. That's fucking bullshit. If that were true, then every man in the world would have a fucking tree growing out of his face. They do though. No, they don't they? Yeah. <laughs> We all have crazy beards. <laughs> like most guys I know have like uh, a beard. Or like or they've like I almost shaved uh, today because it was her nah, itchy. It's I was like it's, it's baloney. I just I'm scared of like yeah, the itching. But god, they are if they're not getting hairy. You're a fucking man, dude. You know what I mean? I'm a manly fucking Before I I swear to god like, you know, uh it's fine. You have be- you have beautiful chest. Well, it's thank great. you, man. I just really appreciate you still the, got that good color. It's October. Nice, you still got nice yeah, color on your chest. Nice. <laughs> By you. that I mean a lingering sunburn. <laughs> <laughs> I think I dropped one of your cards. Got that, that red Irish tan. <laughs> but um, that brings me to my next topic, which that was is a great rant. Thanks breasts. For that. If you have breasts and you'd like to show me your breasts, you can send those to. The, the Rhythm, Rhythm Section, Section Podcast at gmail.com. Send money, too, if you want. If you don't have breasts and you just want to send a little money, go ahead. We're not fucking sexist pigs. We don't just want to see bare, free breasts. You didn't even mention what gender uh, or what, you know, point on the gender, um, you know, this is the breast spectrum yeah. that he wanted to see them up. And like everyone, I got them. I'm you a, got them. I'm em. a cisgender You're white human. male. And when I get a fucking suit fitted... There's I there's breasts uh, double breasted, breast plates on my armor when I go to battle. Yeah, totally. Right. Uh, yeah, chicken breasts. I mean, <laughs> I'm sure those some of them belong to male chickens, or rooster breasts. Yeah, non cisgender chickens. Uh, it doesn't matter. Um, the point is, well, we want your boobs and we want your money. Give us both, please. A little bit of both. One breast, one money. Five bucks and a tit. We're cool. Five dollars is not a lot of money. Ten bucks isn't a lot of money. We'll write you a Neither, song. And two breasts isn't many breasts. Yeah. So forget the breasts. Just send us you, money. We'll let please. you do the math. We just need we need money or sponsors. You want to sponsor us? God. We look don't... at like look at that. You know what? Roll back five minutes and watch Chris's fiery and patriotic. And passionate rant about the quality coffee given out by the Circle K. All they needed to do was tap into a very simple niche, and they've got this guy hooked for life. He is denouncing Starbucks, McDonald's, Tim Hortons, all the fucking big players. All the he's small going, players. He's going to Circle K because they got it right. And he feels good about that. If you want that kind of passion for your business, you can buy it. You don't have to make a great product like Circle K Scott. You can just buy his passion. And we'll promote your ad, your business, your product, your fucking But only for so long. Until a better person comes along, then we'll tell the truth. But the fact of the matter is... is Paying us. In the meantime, we'll lie until we get more successful. Yeah. Totally. We will lie. We'll drop you like a hot potato. Yeah, we don't care. We'll 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 pay you pay us and we'll say whatever. Yes. We'll, we'll say I love anything. Love money cuz money money is yeah. like tokens for like whatever. Fun tokens. Fun we need time. more fun tokens. Okay? And money's drum stupid. tokens, base tokens, drink tokens. Um tokens to drug tokens. Drug tokens. Porn Food. tokens. Yeah, uh Big Mac tokens. Oh my That's god. That's what money is. These are all my favorite Dog things. Dog food I tokens. Just, god, I Want to just you know? be a piece of shit so bad, but I'm trying to grow up and get better credit rating, and I'm I don't know who I am. <laughs> well, the the best way to become I'm a better kill human my is old self and become a new person like a the butterfly. Best, the best way to do it is just to ask for money from strangers on our podcast. They're not strangers. Literally, everyone who watches it knows us. Are they not strangers? It's your brother and your best. Friend. I don't think there's anybody who watches this who doesn't know us which is maybe you know what i'm glad if you don't know us get the fuck out of here turn yeah, around fuck you we get don't out. want to watch you get you out wait, you're not allowed stop here. wasting our time don't know us. the people it, you it, feel like we're you wasting yours stop what anybody i don't want any of you watching us i don't want anyone to watch us no yeah for that matter actually no I, all those people if you're watching us style it back please that's right yeah no, i'm no, sorry that was, we, that was that was one step too far. far yeah i'm gonna reel that back um let's leave it at the people we don't know people we do know 
Let's leave it at send us money to the rhythm section podcast, podcast at gmail.com. M-A-L-E. Com. M-A-L-E. <laughs> um, you know, it would be nice to get a little bit of money, and uh, we, we have received money before, so don't don't sit there and be like, ha, 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 these guys are fucking losers. Why would I ever send them money? Well, guess what? People have sent us money. Yeah. We've been, we've we've been employed. This podcast has employed has produced us. Produced money. It's, it's produced happened. Money. Look, it's here's happened. an example. Give us get your djembe ready. Uh, is, <laughs> is there anyone in the um, in the Instagram live uh, stream right now? Do you have anybody? <laughs> Nobody. Uh, oh yeah, there's a few people. Okay, great. Uh, maybe uh, you can just throw us a uh, random business, a made up business. Let me see. Let's see what someone says there. Random. Fletchers. A Fletchers. If you want a good breakfast They got eggs and they're licensed So you can get tuned up They got nice coffee And they'll fill it like five times Not like once or twice Like McDonald's does Fuck that shit cause it's not enough Imagine if we fucking put a little work into God, it. God, that's the biggest jamba I've ever held. It's too big. <laughs> Why is it so heavy? Is it made of fucking bricks? 70 pounds. I can feel the I weight just... of it when you're playing it. It's like it makes me feel hurt my heavy. fingers lifting it. My God damn. And I don't have terrible fingers. Like, why is it so heavy? Is it made from fucking, like, dinosaur I'm going to get it appraised, but it was a gift, and thank you for the jamba. Cause... I'm going to appraise your gift. That is... A... Just, you know, we know what's coming. If you're getting it appraised, we know it. Just take it to the pawn shop. Yeah. Just don't get no, it. No, not the pawn shop. I be well. I don't know what it is. It, Who else it is looks. It, it, it looks of good quality, good stock. It's heavy. Weight is obvious, uh, often an indicator of quality. If you pick up a drill and another drill and a heavier drill, that one's probably better. Well, no, that's again not necessarily. Nowadays, lightweight is where it's at. But back like, in the day, like you know, I know like a lot of bases, like from like the seventies and shit, like one of the fenders, like they're all they were always heavier heavy. was better. Yeah, they were heavy, oh, a lot, a lot. Of well, a lot of wood products heavier isn't necessarily better, but wood products like a djembe or a base stronger. Heavier wood is stronger. Uh, like metal, heavier, denser material, stronger. That's sort of where I'm getting at. When it comes to raw materials, it's often associated with longevity. Yeah. I mean, now. like, look at a beer. Like, a light beer is like, you know what I mean? Not, what even not is good, it? but this, I mean, this one's full. Oh, it's better. Great point. A full one is better, right? Cheers to that one, man. Yeah. A, yeah. So, it's brewing season. It's harvest season. Is anyone out there brewing? Are you making beers? Are you making ciders? Are you making wines? Are you making? Are you bringing in your gardens, your vegetables? What do you got? I mean, uh, maybe, carrots, maybe, peas. Maybe you're growing cannabis. I, I got my own crop is uh, is uh, out there uh, kind of uh, drying right now. I, had, I grew a smaller crop this year because I just had way too much. I mean, I still have a giant jar of weed like right there, just because I, I grew more than I could possibly smoke. I gave away easily seventy percent of it. Man, we should make uh, we should do a lot. We should make hash sometime. We should do a live hash, a live hash a- stream. episode. We should do a hash stream. <laughs> God, oh, man, I gotta believe people got better things to do than watch us make hash. On no, the I think <laughs> Jesus yeah, Christ. But, but do we have better things? To do than to make no, hash on but like, I that's mean, the like, question. Let's just fuck make... them. We've already established that these are fucking. Maggots, we don't, they don't deserve any no, no, no. of our attention. Dial back, real back, they're our friends, we like them. It's like, if you're watching yeah. this and you don't know us, you can fuck up. 
That's right. We don't That's right. You. If we don't, we don't know you, you're anyone not in the we know, club. You ain't in the club. And you don't need to know both of us. If you know one of us, it's fine. You're cool. If you know Cobra, that's enough. You don't need to know everyone. But if you don't know us, go away. Unless you're a corporate sponsor, and then we want you to stay. Yeah, for sure. I, I'm, I'm a little, I'm losing a little bit who we do and don't like. We like. So maybe I shouldn't money. really do much. I, I don't feel like <laughs> we I like have the a Benjamins. <laughs> Benjamin, yeah, Benjamin. We like the Benjamin. Oh, sorry, George. We like the. Uh, we Darryl. like the Robert Bordens. We like the Queen Elizabeths. We like the Viola Desmonds. We like the Wilfred Laurier's. We like if you don't if you're not picking up on my drift here. It's pretty good. Catching dude. my <laughs> drift. The only life. guy I knew was Borden because I feel like some Canadian rapper made a song about. No, Borden. we talked about him for like ten, five minutes, like on our first episode of this season. Yeah, it sounds like, like I'm Robert Borden. We talked about shit, and you did. Is he the '50s guy? No, that oh, no. Uh, Borden's on the hundred. The fifties guy is so Wilford Laurie he's is a in the jowly five. fella. Yeah, he's all jowly. He looks like fucking Winston Churchill or some shit. I don't know who's on the fifty. <laughs> Does anyone know who's on the fifty? And maybe it's Winston Churchill. Why would Winston Churchill be? On? Well, I don't know. Queen Elizabeth he's is a cool guy. 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 Yeah, but he wasn't like Canadian. Was, it, was Winston Churchill cool or was he? Um, he was the prime minister or of like uh, Britain, like during World War Two. He's oh, well, like the second prime minister during uh, World War Two. The first prime minister during World War Two was Neville Chamberlain. And Never Ch- Neville Chamberlain is famous for being like, maybe if we just let the Nazis take a few countries over, they'll stop. His thing was called the appeasement strategy. And uh, it didn't work. <laughs> the Nazis started taking over shit. And then they were hey. like, oh, sh- darn, they're not stopping. <laughs> so fucking Chamberlain was out. They better him out, I that guess. Is, he and is then an Winston idiot, Churchill but... came in. And he's the guy who was famous. like, we all fight in the trenches. We all fight. Well, now it's all right now. Like that that dude, like you probably heard mm. it. I paraphrased there poorly. But um, I don't know. I, I He was like, um, I think a good leader in war times. I don't know by today's standards if he is considered a great leader, but uh, he wasn't Canadian, so I don't think it's him on the 50. Who is on the 50? God. Why don't we Jell. know this? We should know this. I feel like you should know who's on... I bet you Americans know who's on every one of their dollar bills. I bet you they do You don't. got George W. on the, I bet on you the they one. I think I know don't. some of them. George W. is on the one. You got... Uh, Benjamin Franklin on the uh, on the hundred. Um, that's it. <laughs> oh no, uh, Abe Lincoln I think is on the five. It's on I the think penny. The, I, William Lyon McKenzie. William Lyon oh, McKenzie. The Willie the Lion. William Lyon McKenzie. Willie the Lion was actually I think a vibe vibraphone player. Willie the Lion Smith. Correct. Nice, the line. A vibraphone uh, legend uh, from back in the day, but. Um, you know, that being said, yes, definitely do send us money because we have regular <laughs> jobs. <laughs> we, we, we're we fine. We support ourselves. In fact, I just I'm making more money than I ever made in my whole life. What can I say? But he's, it's still not enough. He's flush with money. He's I'm, got so much money. I'm slightly rich, but it's... Does that... Is that enough? No. Reel it back. Reel it back. Reel it back. No, tell them. I got to send us money if you think we're rich. Then I can do that. I'm slightly rich. I'm not rich. I don't know, actually. People I would still never keep giving say, Bezos I am and not like, rich. all those guys money. Actually, fuck that. Yeah. Apparently, people love Yeah, money people like, guys. if you're rich, they want to give you more money. So, yeah, we're fucking cool. We're fucking, we're basically Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates of Truro. Right? Are we not? No. <laughs> no. I don't who know. Who is? Um, the guy that owns, like, the Fletcher's? Guy, the guy who owns Fletcher's or, like, what's the booze uh, factory? The guy who owns that. Oh, uh, the guy who owns the champagne. <laughs> the Spumante <laughs> factory. The great white fucking factory. The Deweers, or what's it called? They're like, there's like, they, I didn't even know that was there. Deweers? No. Deweers is I, the, diamond the diamond company. Yeah. Deweers is the diamond company. As usual, lots of conjecture and uh, Man, just should, shooting off. No facts. Should we no. try to do a tour of the. I think we talked about that. Should we try to do the tour? We talked about doing a tour of the Sabian factory. The Sabian one is... Man! We should get our feet wet with the Andres. 
Andre's, uh, yes, let's, let's go. It's a huge foundry. Yeah, it's like, a giant, yeah, it is pretty Who's massive. buying that? Like, are we, is that, like, are we sending that wine Winos. to, like, Africa? Like, no. as, like, Winos the keeps of it? It's, like, the bottom of the, bar- like, like, lowest shelf, literally, like, their products lie in the low shelf in the NSLC. We should get some next podcast. Uh, we should go for, uh, yeah, let's, that's a great idea. Let's do a tour of the, of the, uh, to Weir's. Andres. Andres. Whatever the fuck. We're gonna we're gonna research this business. It's a big ass cheap booze factory that's in our industrial park in Truro. It looks shitty. Um, it's probably they make shitty products, but I bet you there's a, a really uh, fake awesome um, like you know PR person who's willing to give a we- sh- even shittier podcast a tour, a guided tour. Let's do it, man. Let's oh, strap man. into the spaceship and let's take a one way flight. All right. To Andres. <laughs> And me on!